Uh, we do have a guest that just popped up, though. Are you ready, Jeffrey? I, and I I'm ready. Are you ready? Who it was going to be? I knew exactly who it was going to be. All right, all right. Well, you're Jeff smarter. Than me. What's up, Bowles? Head coach of the Ohio, up, Ohio, University, Ohio University Bobcats. How we doing, man? Doing great. Yourself? Thanks for having me on. What's uh, up, Jeff? Not much. How you doing today? I think I have a nicer hotel room than you, or bigger. <laughs> Did you get a suite? Like I want to know what you got. I'm over here at the Residence Inn. I got I got the double. I got the fridge behind me. How's your hotel? You know, I got a suite and I got an awesome view um, of the Capitol building. And um, nice. yeah, it's a really cool view. So I'm, give I'm, me when, when you woke up this morning, Jeff, um, what what was it like for you? You had reality hit that Virginia, the defending champs in the NCAA tournament. Like your, your road's a little bit different than a lot. And, and we could talk about that later. But um, what, what were the feelings when you woke up today? Yeah, I mean, it's still surreal, you know, I mean, to, to beat Virginia, defending national champs, ACC champs, and uh, obviously have a lot of great respect for Coach Bennett and what he's been able to do uh, at Virginia. And, um, you know, just crazy, surreal. So, Jeff, everybody knows the, the, the story of Jason Preston at this point, right? Like, he was six foot as a senior in high school, somehow ends up on at an AU tournament that gets him into a prep school. Uh, and as the legend goes, you offered him a scholarship based off of some mixtape that he posted on Twitter and some highlights that you had seen. Is that, can you, is that one, is well, that I, true? Or can you just kind of- It wasn't it? both. I right. Yeah, I was near uh, Saul, Saul Phillips and, and Will Ryan was the guy who's the head coach at Wisconsin Green Bay. And, um, you know, I always said like what Will saw in him, you know, obviously a lot of other people didn't. And, um, you know, when he, when he ended up coming to OU, he was about 6'3", 160. And, you know, his freshman year, he played off the ball for most of the year. And then um, probably about the maybe last six, seven games of the regular season, they put him on the ball. And uh, you could just tell he had it, you know, that vision, the passing. And uh, so when I got there, he was about 6'3", 170, and he grew another inch and, you know, gained about 15, 20 pounds that summer. And just, like, if you go back to his story, Rob, like, everything that happened the way it happened like to get to this point like he he forgot his shoes for the aau tournament you know he had to turn around and go back to the apartment like imagine if he got there and no one had shoes you know just little things like that that you know when, when you really think about his story it's a it's a movie his his, his life is a movie what's it like coaching a kid like that yeah just awesome he's, he's a great kid to be around on a daily basis he loves the game of basketball always watching NBA games, NCAA games, you know, watching videos, you know, once the extra. And, you know, the, the thing that I, I saw the most, you know, is just off the court. You know, I always talk to him about, hey, be a pro's pro and, you know, be a leader. And he, he'd never been in that role before. So I had to catch myself sometimes like, you know, you have to, you know, coach him how to be a leader, you know, what to say, what to, you know, think, what different things to do. And so many times I think as coaches, you expect kids to lead because they're the best player or a senior, but they don't know how to do it. They don't know what to say. And he just, he's a sponge. He, he's just great to be around. It's actually really interesting that you make that point because it's, he's probably never been a star before on any team, has he? No, I mean, like last year we played St. Bonaventure and beat them. And then our third game was Iona. And, you know, he's always been a pass first, second point guard. So the first four minutes of the game, you know, they're locking on their shooters like Illinois did. He's coming off a ball screen and making passes and, and turn the ball over. So I said, JP, you have to score the ball. Like he'd never been a you know scorer really. And he ended up having like 27 points, you know, 14 rebounds, eight assists that game. And, he, you know, he's, you know, he, you fail to realize, like you mentioned, like, he'd never been a go-to guy like five years ago the guy was averaging two points a game not even playing in his high school so there's a lot of things you learn through the you know course of time and you know you expect and think they know but they don't know all right jeff uh i don't know if um if goodman told you but we do have a surprise for you on the stream today you didn't tell me what's up coach hey what's up <laughs> 
we, we got the bowl family connection here. We, we, we wanted to connect you guys. We wanted to, you know, Chase has been like my, my biggest fan here of, of DMing me uh, constantly throughout the year of the bowl. So we had to bring him on and uh, get you guys kind of reunited here. How, how hard has it been, Chase, not being able to see your dad? You know, obviously you see him from afar last night after the win against Virginia, but but not being able to give him—I don't know if you still give him hugs at 14 years old anymore. But uh, you know, I, I'm assuming you would have after that one. Yeah, I, I think it's—I think it's—you know—I think it's a responsibility for him to have, you know, to stay away. Like it's—I know it's like hard for him, and it's obviously hard for us. But it's just a sacrifice we have to make. But. It's, I mean, I like seeing them uh, up closer than we usually are. But, yeah, I think it's a lot easier when I get to go see him at the games than FaceTiming him. But, yeah, like when we went through it's that like, one COVID pause, it was very hard because, you know, he, I couldn't see him for like a week and a half or something. So, and then recently we've been staying away from each other, not trying to, you know, get in too close of contact with me going to school, being around everybody. Jeff, what's it like? What's it like now seeing Chase and – and again, like winning that game and having your family there. You know, I was at Abilene Christian last night, and it was cool. But but I felt I also felt like you know Joe Pleasant couldn't hug Anthony Pleasant after he made those free throws. How hard is that for you not to jump in the stands and hug your family? Yeah, it's funny he chases on here because I called him. I said, "Hey, I'm gonna be on uh, Goodman and Dowster's live this morning." <laughs> Yeah, he's like, oh, cool, okay, okay, see ya. But we had it hooked Chase up. We guy, had it hooked man. up. He, you know, he lives it, breathes it, dies it, and you know he's our best recruiter. And and the the tough thing for me was that you know after that MAC championship game, not to have him down there cutting the nets down with us, you know, dancing on the floor, taking the pictures, and that you know that's everybody, their families. You know, there's a sacrifice involved, and you know you wish you could you know enjoy those experiences together because he's been through a lot you know i mean he's lived in akron lived in columbus lived in stony brook you know and now we're back at ohio university and a lot of people don't realize what the sacrifice you know kids make of coaches uh sons and daughters and uh just you know you want to experience it with them so jeff you mentioned uh dancing on the floor after the game kids i gotta ask you did you see your dad dancing in the locker room that one last night? Can you just break that down? Listen, so I've made a tweet previously about how, you know, I, I think he needs some new dance moves, and part of it's on me. You know, I need to give him some, you know, new new lessons or something. <laughs> I don't like the jazz hands going on there. I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was the June you know, Bug Challenge, man. The June Bug Challenge. And then he gave me a little shopping cart. I don't know what that was going around in the circle. <laughs> I think you know you need some new dance moves. Like, like uh, I forget who was saying it last night um, in the studio. They're talking about how you need some new dance moves because you know you're. Or I'm sorry, it was Mark Titus. He was going at you for uh, you know your little when you whenever you don't know what to do. You know you go with the dab. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure, man. Like, you know, Chase said Charles Barkley called me out, and you know, we might have to have a dance off, me and him. But you know, those are you know, I work for Mark Schmidt at Robert Morris. And he always told me after every win, enjoy it and celebrate it because you never know when the next one's coming. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this much, guys. Um, I was at a wedding two years ago for Joe Porzello and Jimmy uh, and, and I have a video of Jimmy and Tracy to a DMX song that I show you guys. Woo! Not good, yeah. It ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. You, you, you got me beat, both. You got me beat, no problem whatsoever. All right, well, listen. We, we really appreciate you guys coming on. We wanted to get the two of you on together. I know it's been difficult for you guys not to be able to uh, to be. Listen, my 17-year-old daughter even misses me right now, which never happens. So I, I know how hard it is for everybody right now. Enjoy it. Uh, good luck against Creighton. And uh, I can't wait for that Jason Preston, Marcus Zagorowski matchup. So uh, I'll be there tomorrow for that one and, and uh, lock into that scalpel. Awesome. Appreciate you guys.